What would it take to throw an entire planet? Let's hope we hear the end of this. Science behind the Infinity Gauntlet. So I think it's needless to say that everyone's excited for Avengers Infinity War, especially those who saw the teaser trailer they revealed at San Diego Comic Con. I wasn't there myself, but I did see the trailer. Are, are those the cops at my door? Anyway, it was a pretty cool trailer. It's become nearly common knowledge that, in the footage, Thanos can be seen throwing what is allegedly a whole planet at the Avengers. Now, I'm not sure it's a planet, and I can't give away anything you wouldn't know legally, I don't think. So I'm just going to say that, while it's a celestial body, I don't think it's a whole planet. But what if that were to happen? What if we were to gather enough energy to somehow throw an entire planet? What would that take? Well, the simple answer is a lot of energy. But that's just it. That's the simple answer. We don't do that here. We dig deeper. The non-simple answer will require an example. How about the largest planet in our solar system? What if we tried to gather enough energy to throw Jupiter? Well, to calculate exactly how much energy it would take to throw Jupiter, we need to know Jupiter's mass. Mass is the amount of matter that makes something up. We know Jupiter's mass is about 318 times that of Earth's mass. Earth's mass itself is about 5.972 octillion kilograms. Doing the math, this puts Jupiter at about 1.9 nonillion kilograms. That's a lot of mass. A lot of mass. How on Earth, actually, how in the universe, could we even begin to move such a huge planet? Our answer lies in a unit of measure called foot-pounds. Don't worry, people using the metric system. This will end up making sense. Because foot-pounds can actually be converted into joules. Joules are a unit of measure we use to measure energy, and it's what we'll use to find out how many joules of energy is needed to move Jupiter of our own accord. Foot-pounds, on the other hand, measure the amount of energy it takes to specifically move an object weighing X pounds Y amount of feet. To know foot-pounds, we need to know the distance from the center of our object, in this case Jupiter, to the source of the energy, and how far away from us the source of energy is, both in feet. Of course, we also need to know how much energy is being used on this object. Using Thanos as an example, he could just wave his hand to move a planet like Jupiter. That's only about 1 pound or 0.4 kilograms of force. Now, let's kick this into high gear. Let's say we're trying to throw Jupiter one light year. That's the distance from Jupiter's center to the source of energy. But what is our distance from the source of energy? Well, if we're using the Infinity Gauntlet, it's just arm's length for us. For me, that's about 2.5 feet. We'll round it up to 3 to average that out. So we have our distance from us to the energy source, which is 3. We need the distance from our object center to our energy source. Like I said, we're using one light year, but we need to break that down to feet like we do with my arm length. One light year is about 9.461 quadrillion kilometers. Converting this puts about 31.46 trillion feet in a light year. Multiplying that by 3, which is how we solve the whole foot pound equation, we get 93.126 trillion foot pounds. Finally, we can convert this into joules. Doing that math, it would take about 126 quintillion, 253 quadrillion, 767 trillion. 348,620,248,000 joules to willingly move, or in this case, throw Jupiter. That's already a huge number, but to just put that into perspective, it only takes about 98,000 joules to break a human femur bone, a bone which can withstand the weight of five pickup trucks. It takes a lot to move Jupiter, we knew that, but putting it into perspective is almost entirely different. When you really think about it, the only energy keeping Jupiter in our solar system is that of the sun's gravity. Imagine if something like the Infinity Gauntlet were real. It would be like holding the power of our very sun in your hands. I think I'll pass. I'd rather not mess up our galaxy for, like, infinity. Hey guys, hope you all enjoyed that episode of Science Behind Superheroes. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like and leave a comment as what superhero or superhero you guys want to see me do next. Uh, sorry this video was a bit late. I was very busy this past week and I was a day where I was sick. Um, but on the bright side, I actually got the Deadpool video back up, so 
you guys can finally go watch that again. If you didn't know, that was actually down for a bit because there was a copyright claim on it, but it wasn't a fair copyright claim, and so I disputed it, and it's all good now. By the way, I will be busy for a little while still, so I'm sorry if the next video is late as well. There's just tons of stuff that I've been up to lately, and it, the videos take not like a backseat or anything, but they take a little bit of a second priority. Uh, just a heads up so you guys know that. And uh, yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time.